you know, my best advice is like, don't be afraid. You know, if you're really passionate about something and then you feel like you could help another group and that's something that you really want to do. My first advice is some of the steps that I would definitely recommend is, you know, create a pilot. Pilot meaning, you know, get friends and family and the people in that particular industry that you want to serve. Reach out to them, you know, do small group um, networking and talk to them. Say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this particular service. Is that something you'll be interested in? And if you're interested, if you'll be interested in it, what are some of the advice or some of the ideas or service that you think that I could add that could make it better? So I would start by, you know, from that particular market, get a group of 20 or 30 people, you know, reach out to people in social media and reach out people in that community that you want to serve, particularly reach out to a few people from influencer, from season, people in that profession and just reach out to them and ask them, you know, what are some of the needs in in terms of the market what is it that they need you're listening to the black to business podcast an educational podcast providing black entrepreneurs with the tools and resources to start and grow their businesses we chat with vetted black entrepreneurs thought leaders and business owners as they provide tips and resources to help take your business to the next level i'm your host monique t marshall It's easy to think that you have to know everything about a particular industry before starting a business. And if you're anything like me, when I first started Black to Business, I thought that everything had to be perfect. And as time went on, I learned that not only was this the furthest thing from the truth, but also how detrimental this mindset can be for the growth and taking action in business. I also had a community of amazing people around me who were shining examples of launching and creating in business without knowing all of the answers and just figuring it out as they go. And they were wildly successful. So these days, I'm a firm believer in done is better than perfect. And today's guest is also proving just that. Joining me on the show today is Joanne Briere, the founder of Trendy Tripping, which is a co-working management company that works closely with independent developers and small businesses to develop strategies that get results. She's also the founder of NY Beauty Suites, a hybrid model of flexible beauty suites that offer short-term and long-term rental options designed for beautypreneurs in the New York area. And I'm so lucky to call Joanne a dear friend because we've known each other for years. And I wanted her on the show today to speak about her entrepreneurial journey and the launch of her latest venture, NY Beauty Sleeps, specifically because Joanne had absolutely no prior beauty industry experience and no formal education in the industry. But she saw a need in the middle of COVID-19 and launched this innovative company in downtown Brooklyn. And if you've been living under a rock and you haven't heard, New York real estate is sky high. So her being able to secure and build out this full space is a big deal. During this conversation, Joanne is also going to talk about how she's been able to enter a totally new industry, how she didn't let not knowing something stop her, and the impact that community and her network has had on her success. This is a real and raw conversation, and I'm so excited to share this conversation with you. So let's dive in. So, Joanne, welcome to the Black to Business podcast. I am excited about today's conversation because it is all about you. I know you and just like finally getting you on the podcast to share your story, and your journey. I think it's going to be very inspirational for our audience. So welcome to the Black to Business podcast. Thank you so much, Monique. Thank you for having me. I'm so super excited. I'm a big fan of Black to Business, as you know. So thank you so much for having me. Of course. So I always like to start off um, for my audience who is not familiar with you a little bit about your journey, where you are today and how did you get to where you are today in your business? So if you could just share a little bit of your story. Sure. So my current um, currently right now, I just launched a latest um, venture, New York Beauty Suite, which was founded during the pandemic of last year. Um, helping um, small businesses find workspace for, for, for people that are in the beauty and wellness industry. Prior to that, um, you know, I'm in the hospitality. I was in hospitality industry. My background's in the hospitality industry, currently managing uh, a co-working space with two locations in Brooklyn under my company, Trendy Tripping. Love it, love it. 
And I think today is going to be extra special because, um, like I said, knowing your story, I really want to just start from the beginning and talking about, like you mentioned, your your background is in hospitality. So you've been able to go from hospitality and to also dive into the beauty industry, but from a different angle. And if you could just tell us a little bit more about like what inspired you to create NY Beauty Suites. Um, NY Beauty Suite um, actually started as a way to help find a solution for a family member at that time, my niece, who's in the beauty industry. She's a stylist. And during the pandemic, um, as you know, many of the space, storefront, salon was shutting down and because they didn't consider as a non-essential. So a lot of the small business was suffering. There wasn't really no solution or no way for them to do the work that they love to do. Um, so when she came to me, she asked me, hey, you know, do you have any space here at the Brooklyn location at 495? And I was like, well, you do hair. That's not going to be a good match because I cannot mix the service that you're doing with the, you know, with the service provider, with the small business here. That's totally two different industry. I don't know the policy or the code to that. And, you know, she actually convinced me. She said, well, you know, there's a lot of us who doesn't have space and we need space. Maybe that's something you could look into. And during that time, I had like about maybe 2,000 square footage space available at the building at 495. And I was like, well, you know, since so many of you are coming, a lot of her, a lot of her friends and a lot of people that I know are coming up to me, all of them are coming from the beauty industry, Monique, you know, from hair, nails. And I was like, wait a minute, what is going on? Um, Many of the girls was working from home and they just needed a space to work. So what I did is I was like, well, this is maybe a great opportunity to see how I could help that market. So I went to the landlord. I said, listen, I want to create uh, a workspace particularly dedicated to the beauty industry. And I went and leased the space, the 2000 square footage. I said, I'm going to create a pilot. I I went and built it about like eight suites and I put sinks. I put different kind of amenity for them that they need. And then within like a month, the space was filled up. We had about like 40 people on a wait list and the rest is history. Oh my God. And the thing about it is the fact that I think another thing that we have to touch on is the fact that you were feeling a need and this was a totally different industry, but you saw the opportunity and you went for it. Um, I want to dive more into the fact that you had no background, no beauty business background or no background in beauty. So I want to talk about how was this for you being that you didn't have that background and some of the hardships maybe that you faced or things that you had to learn and also some of the things that you knew just from a business perspective. Of course. So no background. I want everybody to know no background. I don't even know what the proper license are for for the um, beauty industry, so the proper document. But what I did is during that time, since so many people was coming to me. So I was I used that opportunity to ask them what are some other things that I needed. And then a lot of people was very, very helpful. A lot of them was very open to say, hey, this is what you know, where you kind of kind of find information. This is what we're going to need. So I went and do some of the research. I call some uh, beauty salon people. I call that I know. I call um, a lot of um, people in the industry that I was to check to help guide me. And, you know, and at that time, it senses a very different business, you know, building a suite than a, a traditional salon. So there's a lot of things I had to do from trial and error, right? So trial and error will have to come in from how many, you know, do I need to put um, sink in the in the suite? Do they have to share the sink versus like, they, you know, like what type of service they're going to provide and who's going to be there? And they all were very different. So that niche was a mix where I had to mix where those that do nails, that do hair, massage therapists, estheticians, so I learned really quickly that you cannot mix all the service together. So one of the things that I learned, mistake that I made was that you have to really curate the space where the experience fits um, perfectly for the um, for the entrepreneur that are in the space. But 
I do believe if you do have last year provide an amazing opportunity for those that have an entrepreneurial background that just want to provide a solution. The solution was really workspace. You know, real estate is extremely sky high in Brooklyn and New York particularly. And for mm-hmm. me, I have experience in building flexible workspace in the commercial real estate. So it was a little bit much easier for me to understand, okay, well, real estate, space, how do I connect this beautypreneur to a space that they could use and how I could just kind of like continue helping them finding that space where they don't have to pay like, you know, market rate or sky high um, rent in Brooklyn. So that was the solution that I come up with. And, you know, so now I'm learning so much about it, <laughs> but it's no background, no background at all whatsoever in the beauty industry. So I'm hoping to inspire a lot of people. Sometimes it's just like you being very passionate about helping people, which is I'm very passionate about helping small business, helping women own businesses. So that's where my heart was at that time. Yes. And knowing you for a long, 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 long time, I can vouch and say that that is definitely you. Um, Very passionate about connecting people and just supporting people, Uh, which brings me to my next question. Today's topic is about the beauty of connecting in business. And I want to talk about um, you mentioned that your cousin came to you with this need and then Mm -hmm. you saw the need and you were able to fill the need but also the fact that you really were able to fill up this space in such a short amount of time what do you think that you how do you think that you were able to gain the trust of those people to be able to fill up the space okay so i already had a managing a space building a space from ground up, building a community from ground up. So I have a, I have a building community where I currently at a Brooklyn common, but I've been building it for six years. So for my experience and my foot in the ground, I'm very involved in the community. I'm very involved with the small business. I know them, you know, we do a lot of resources, workshop, we do a lot of event networking opportunities and pop-ups. So for me, that give me the ground up and for me to build a trust to know that, I'm capable of kind of creating a niche and creating a, you know, solution that could help them. And then also they were very supportive building something like that, that required for me, the experience that I gained from Brooklyn Common um, from now is really having the entrepreneurs involved. Because for me, they're also, I consider them partners, collaborators, investors. So I have them involved in various ways. I have them involved by doing surveys. I have them involved by asking what is the space need. They're all, they're all very involved. Hey, Joanne, I think, you know, you should design the bathroom this way. I think you should have a second sink. I think we need a net different ventilation. So a lot of them are very involved in the space in terms of what I'm building. Mm. And so, Joanne, what advice would you give to someone who is, because I think the one thing um, that is true for you as well is that you are very, you have a business mindset, um, mm-hmm. but that you also have the experience again to back it up. For those people who are thinking, um, you know, I just want to create the business to fill the need and not necessarily like, because like you said, you're not in the beauty industry. So doing that work, what advice would you have for them to go about approaching uh, do, starting a business that way? I think it would be, you know, my best advice is like, don't be afraid. You know, if you're really passionate about something and then you feel like you could help another group and that's something that you really want to do. My first advice is some of the steps that I would definitely recommend is, you know, create a pilot. Pilot meaning, you know, get friends and family and the people in that particular industry that you want to serve. Reach out to them, you know, do small group um, networking and talk to them. Say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this particular service is that something you'll be interested in. And if you're interested, if you'll be interested in it, what are some of the advice or some of the ideas or service that you think that I could add that could make it better. So I would start by, you know, from that particular market, get a group of 20 or 30 people, you know, reach out to people in social media and reach out people in that community that you want to serve, particularly reach out to a few people from influencer, from season people in that profession and just reach out to them and ask them, you know, what are some of the needs in, in terms of the market? What is it that they need? And I would just jump on it. 
Yes, because that's my next question is, okay, so guys, I've been to the space and the space is amazing and I have just seen Joanne from years of growth Um, and this space is in downtown Brooklyn. Like that is a big deal. It's really in downtown Brooklyn. So um, (laughs) I want to talk about, you know, were you nervous? Because that is a big leap, but it's something that has worked out for you. And I'm pretty sure people who are listening, they have this big vision, but they're kind of scared. It's so big. Big. And like I said, this is downtown Brooklyn. Um, were you nervous and how were you able to deal with that to get over those mindset blocks if you had any? Yes, super nervous. Um, you know, a lot of time I'm like, oh my God, I, I don't know what I'm getting myself into. Why am I doing this? What's going on? I heard you say. You know, it, it, it's like, oh my God, this is it, you know? And for those who have been in this space, you're going to see the second, you know, the downtown Brooklyn, the streets are extremely big because in my mindset, I said, okay, if this doesn't work, I'm going to pivot turning this to an apartment. I don't know. I'm, of course, you know, so much things going on. You're going to see the streets are super big comparing to the first location because I'm like, what if? Of course, everyone have that. Um, But luckily for me, I have an amazing community that I could tap into, you know, again, these are the advice that I would say to a lot of the, you know, entrepreneurs that are listening, make sure you are in a surrounding place or a group that you get support, you get feedback, you get honest feedback and you get some other resources and resources mean like sometimes bouncing idea with someone and then have surround yourself with a professional, with a few professional that are counting that could help you that, 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 other profession that could help you with your finance, that could help you with your business formation, your marketing. So I was very lucky in that sense, but I still have to, you know, have a lot of fear because, you know, this is real estate. It's very expensive to be in downtown Brooklyn to, to sign in the lease, to do the bill that I'm not knowing what I'm doing. I still go to that every day. But I think the beautiful thing about it is like when you're building something, you becoming you becoming like, you know, you have more experience. You know, a year from now, I'm sure this is something that's gonna be much easier for me. But surround yourself with a lot of other people that wanna support you. Surround yourself by people that wanna uplift you in your career. There's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of us out there that are very supporting. That's really especially if you're building a service or a business that's helping them. So they're gonna be extremely helpful in that arena. But of course, very nervous. So the whole idea is Monique, that's why the suites are so big because I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> my thing is my apartment. <laughs> I, I get it now. I totally get it because it is a gorgeous space. I love it. I yes, love it. Yes, and, yes. Um, and that's, you know, one of the things that you mentioned is also like you really stress the power of community and connections. And I want to talk about the how you were able to tips on nurturing um, those relationships and community that you have. Any advice on how one you were able to do it, um, you know, maybe waiting before asking or providing value before asking or just like how were you able to nurture those relationships? And I think um, it's, you know, for me, it's natural for uh, for me. And I think it's natural for a lot of us, uh, especially, you know, those who are like from a small town, from the, especially those who are from the Caribbean, because we survive from that, right? Mm-hmm. So we grew up by having, you know, the aunts, the grandma, the neighbor, everybody raised you that kind of mentality. So we already, com- I'm already comfortable in that sense. So by nurturing that is really like, you know, checking on people, you know, finding out what they're doing, supporting them where you can and supporting sometimes come in various ways. So supporting an entrepreneur, checking up on them could be like whether sharing their story, sharing their services to another person that might need it and even connecting with them, helping them finding different kind of resources or resources could be like, you know, you're creating a list. Sometimes I create a list of grants and, and, um, and uh, grants and loans and I send the list to a few people I might say hey Monique this is something you might be interested in so it's always finding resources on things of value that you could share with your community because you know what they're looking for and we're all looking for the same thing it's resources connection and other people that could help them with their businesses and clients so pretty much like you just have to keep up to date in some of the people that you have in your, in your network and check up on them 
Totally agree. I totally agree. Um, and I think that, you know, I'm from Georgia and I'm around a lot of Caribbean people. And I always say that there is so many similarities in how we act and how we just conduct business and just how we are as people. So I totally agree um, with what you're saying. It's part of the community is very big. Yeah. And speaking of community and support. So as I mentioned, and you were able to mention before that you do NY Beauty Sleeves, but you also have Trinity Tripping and you're also managing another space. Uh, how do you manage all of the juggling pieces? Again, this is something like I'm very lucky because I love what I do. Right. And I do. And what I meant by that also I just like, it's like a kid in a candy store, right? So to me, it's not even work. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. besides all the headache, but I love what I do. So, and then that's something in my nature, managing the coworkers. Because right now, of course, I have an amazing team. So I'm not doing nothing, you know, I'm not by myself. And it's just putting system in place, putting a team together that could help you do with some, with the operation and the daily tasks that you do. So right now it's much easier for me, but before it was hell, but right now, thankfully, I have an amazing team that helped me with the day to day. And my whole job right now is, you know, creating and building the vision, finding funding and finding space. But the rest of the stuff, I have an amazing team that helped me manage the day to day operation. Um, trendy tripping. I studied that, I guess, you know, since me and you know each other from doing networking events, you know, going from different bars, from different restaurants is just connecting people to different networks working opportunities and resources. So, and then, so pretty much that company right now is just like reach out to um, different developers, reaching out to different people that have space and hey, this is what I offer. And this is the service that I do. And how can I help you kind of create a win-win opportunity between your space and the people in the community and the small business in the community? Yes, definitely. And Joanne, so we talked about this before, um, and I want to talk about it on the podcast because I think it's so great to speak on. uh, But what you are doing is very disruptive. Um, You have, you know, created this amazing business and just talking about your background and your experience in this industry. I want to talk about why do you feel that there is more than one way to make it in business and just the state of business and how we used to approach the industries are just changing. Yeah. I mean, my God, there is, it's just like everything else, you know, there is definitely one way to do, to do business. Um, and you guys have to be very, to me, I would recommend, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs to be very flexible. There is not one size fit all to anything from my experience, you know, there's not like a guide or book that you could follow. And then the result is going to be the same. I don't think so. <laughs> you know, there's going to be different, unique opportunities and challenge that's going to rise in different time, you know, for some Somebody now who was probably opening up a co-working space of the business model that I'm in, there I'm sure it's gonna be different from now after post-COVID. It's gonna be different. You know, now you're gonna deal, deal dealing with a lot of different laws and rules and different amenities and different so much different challenges than somebody that built um post-COVID. I mean pre-COVID. So um it's just gonna be very different. So that's what I would definitely say. Yeah. And how are you, um, you know, dealing with COVID and, you know, creating a co-working space and just like all the restrictions, especially being in New York, it's just like we are on time out. Um, but how do you deal with that and make sure that the business still runs smoothly? I'm just going to be very honest. I Hopefully I don't get in trouble for this, but... <laughs> We have, I mean, we follow the COVID, um, the COVID protocol. We follow all the rules and making sure a lot of things are in place. But one of the things that I do, I kind of turn off a lot of the media and a lot of negativity, what they're putting on that. Because what I do feel from experience, from a business owner, from working and knowing a lot of the challenges small business have, a lot of the, these rules and a lot of the things that the, the way the governments are running some of these um, rules putting on, they are destroying and crushing a lot of the small business. So for us, we just follow. We I put a lot of the safety in rule, but at the same time, I will base on what my community need. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it, it could be very challenging. You know, for example, a perfect example is 
you know, they will say, well, you know, some of these businesses considered in the beauty and wellness are considered non-essential. For me, it was in the ground who, who knows and working and knowing a lot of these businesses, it is very much essential. So (laughs) it's essential for a lot of us mental health. It's essential for a lot of us for self-care. It's essential like you cannot get up to work and not getting your hair done, your grooming. You know, it it is essential. So for me, it's just like based on what I talk and based on who I have in this space, we have a strong community and we create our own rules and a lot of these things. So. Hopefully, they don't hear you could edit that part. <laughs> I'm like, it's not edit this part, but it's a real part. I mean, we're family. It's real though because it's so different. Um, you know, being in New York and just how businesses. When you look at other people in other places, just like how we are having to operate, and like you said, the small businesses are immensely impacted. So I think that yeah, it's a conversation that has to be had. How the future of business looks for New York in general, um, and for major cities. So, yeah, yeah, I do think everybody should have an option, you know, an option as long, of course, you have you follow all the rules, you have all the procedures in place. And I think everybody should have an option and flexibility how they run their business. Yep. Agreed. So I want to talk about, of course, the beauty of connecting um, and the things that you're able to do. And I've experienced the space and just talking about the benefits of working in a shared co-working space, because I know that some people initial thoughts are, I don't want to share a space. I just want my own building. But the pros you've mentioned are the fact that you don't have to pay market rate. But then also talk about some of the other benefits, like the connections that you're able to make um, within these spaces. Yeah, there is actually, you know, not only that, you know, you could actually expand from being in the space. You could have, you could meet a lot of different entrepreneurs to collaborate. You could also build your, your, you know, building a community, be part of a community that could help you thrive and that could support you because, you know, from being an entrepreneur is a very lonely road. You're going to have a lot of questions. You're going to run into a lot of challenges it's just like you have so many people around you and that could help you. And also being in a safe, sanitized environment to meet your client, that's something that's very helpful. Um, and it's all the resources that we have in the community. But I do think, you know, I do think building and being in the space, it is something that a lot of entrepreneurs need it. Because think about it. If you need if you need an accounting, you find the accounting is there, you need a marketer, you need a even a notary public, whatever the service or professional that you need to help you with your business is already in the space. So I think being in a shared space, being in a community that supports you in an environment that supports you, that's gonna tell a lot and being part of a lot of your system. That's something that I think I would highly recommend for entre- every entrepreneur to to be part of a shared space if they can versus being by themselves. For me, it's very helpful in many ways. It helps a lot of entrepreneurs in so many other ways that I cannot even, you know, continue to even think about. Yeah, certainly. And Joanne, I know that you have some great, amazing things coming up, especially um, this week or n- with this month. Um, but I want to talk about, I forgot to ask you about your timeline as far as like from idea to conception. I think that's important to note. So like, when did you get the idea <laughs> and when did you start working? Oh, uh, so it depends. So for this particular idea, I'm like, I'm an Aries by nature. I'm a fire sign. So I just jump in and ask questions later <laughs> and, you know, deal with all the issues that it comes with. So once I have the idea, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. And then I'll make a few phone calls. Um, and I said, well, this is what I'm working on. This is what I'm thinking about doing. What do you think? And mind you, I'm around a lot of people who's that kind of mindset, like-minded. So they're going to say, well, that's good or that's not good. Or I think you should add this. You think you should remove this. This is where I think, you know, so provide me a lot of the support and mental support and some of the resources, maybe connection that I didn't know and have before. But I would take, I would say for something like that, you know, it's been a year. So I think it'll take me between from the time that I have the ideas, you know, I'll work on it every single day, like seven days a week you know, with no balance, <laughs> with no balance. It's right now, thanks to the girls, they're helping me with a lot of the self-care and a lot of the wellness, you know, take some time to breathe, but I would just go on it nonstop. You know, I guess something like that, it takes me, I think when I start the idea, it's like a, from a month to three months, I already launched the space. I already had clientele and 
um, you know, there's no timeline, particularly timeline, depending on who you are and depending on what you have in your plate. But I will work on the idea every single day. Yeah. And, you know, and I'll just go for it. And then now it's like, a, it's like a year after I'm like, okay, well, this is what I need. This is what, this is what some of the things that I need to do. And it, I'll work on it nonstop. Yeah. I'm, I have a very laser focus and I'll just work on it and everything every day until we get to the, you know, to the, to the place that I need it to be. Mm-hmm. That's what I was thinking immediately in my head, like nonstop. Cause I know you and it's just like, yeah, she's working on it nonstop. So <laughs> Yes, 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 I know. Joanne, what does it mean for you to be? Um, I, I know we often talk about this, and I keep saying it, but it is a big deal, um, especially being in New York, you know, being able to produce something like this as a Black woman, as a woman in New York. Um, what does it mean for you, and do you feel the impact of what you're creating? Absolutely. Um, from every day, the stories, from every day, looking at um, the clients, the members and seeing they for them coming up to me, say, hey, you know, I've been working in the a spa industry. I've been doing facial. I've been doing hair, um, working under someone else. And I never thought I'd have an opportunity to have my own space so I could build my own. So right now, I could see it from the girls being in the space from a lot of them. This is their first time they have their own space. This is a first time they start building their own business on their own. A lot of them being in the industry for a long time, very professional in that, in their field. But now the impact is like, you could see that their families start coming to the space. Now they started to opening conversation about building, you know, legacy building, like leaving a business for the, the next generation. So the impact is huge because now having a list of a growing list of small business um, beautypreneurs are reaching out to me all over, say, "Hey, you know, I'm looking for space. Um, I'm looking to connect with other beautypreneurs and wellnesspreneurs." It's a huge impact because right now, if you're looking at the news or you're looking at, um, you know, what's going on. That particular industry, no one else is really providing or talking about a solution for them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, and I'm hoping like, you know, New York Beauty Street could be that voice and that platform to actually, you know, creating some kind of noise to let people know, you know, this particular industry, this is something that, you know, that's suffering. And I, I love that you said that because just knowing your journey from, you know, we used to meet in the library and oh this is something that... <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. You see, we met in the when we used to meet in the library. Uh, the library, it's like you know, we get time. You have to be using the space for an hour, and then we you know it takes us forty five minutes to warm up already. Yes, so, <laughs> and we have so much to share to talk about. It is extremely important to have a supporting group, you know, to build yes. these ideas because these ideas you know, going to flourish to now. And at that time, I remember I was like, I was telling you and just, I'm tired of just going to space to space. You know, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I was like, we need our own hub. This is like, this is not productive because, you know, by the time we wanted to talk and then they're like, okay, the next, you got to have to book the space again. (laughs) So, it was so crazy. It was so crazy. And you was talking about, you know, at that time, I remember the library even started to have podcast session. It's 30 minutes. You have to be, it was just like, this is not going to work. We need our own space. <laughs> Exactly. It was we, but we, you know, we used to use the library. What I'm telling you, the Brooklyn Public Library was like we used to use that library, and um, Joanne really got us all together. And you've been doing this for years, just bringing us together. And I just remember those days and how you've grown so much. And then from there, I think I knew about the podcast room because I started recording Black to Business podcast in that library yeah. with like the mic on a book. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes, but you see, but these are the same idea we've been working on for years, right? Mm-hmm. So if somebody's looking at our journey, it's not something that we just started doing yesterday. So the journey right. is it's 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 something it takes time. It takes time, but we would the things that differentiate us, we're very consistent, we are very committed, and we know that there is something there. And then that something it is what 
come to about now, what we're doing is about like, you know, your podcast, you know, creating all these amazing packages, helping small businesses, black owned businesses, creating the directory to listen all the professional that, you know, if I want to work with and other people want to work, it, 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 it takes, it's a, it takes time. So, mm-hmm. but we all know that's something we want to do. But we have to continue to now. It's like that's the product. That's the result of us being spending so much time in the library. Yes, yes. And speaking of knowing Joanne for years, one of the things I've always expressed to her is that, like, Joanne, people need to see you because you are doing amazing things. And Joanne is really the definition of a powerful leader behind the scenes. So we got to talk about you not choosing. Sometimes you're doing it a little bit more now. Um, to be highly visible, but ruling behind the scenes. Um, what advice do you have for those who are looking to approach their business the same way? Or what are your thoughts on continuing to do that or, you know, like stepping out there more? Um, I think for me now it's, I feel more comfortable. It's really, so it's different. You know, my personality, I'm very shy mm-hmm. in, in terms of like being in front of the camera, social media, that's not something that I think about all the time because when I'm, you know, you have the left inside, left brain in, in the right brain. When I'm working, when I'm in working, I just work. I'm always in working mode. And then when you're creating content, being in front of the media, that's a different kind of mindset you got to be prepared for. And I'm like, oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, but to be quite honest, uh, you, you and a few other the girls said, you know, I need to share and sharing look different for everybody. I am going to be sharing more. I am going to see being seen more in the press and social media, sharing more of the back end, because I want people to understand yes. there's so many of you guys are doing amazing job sharing the day to day, the live up, but the back end to see me crying, me negotiating, me getting rejected, me getting, um, having a bad month looks like me getting losing like maybe a ten twenty thousand dollars in one month because of bad contractors so i want to share more of that i really wanted the time to understand what i wanted to share but i think i'm in a space now after six years that i feel comfortable i really wasn't sure what to share because i didn't want to share just any type of content that there's so much content in the internet. There's so much content in the, but from my years of experience and from me being around so many entrepreneurs and I feel like there's, there is a gap and there is a, there is a way that people could, that I want to share what the real deal is because the real deal is not looking glammed up. It's not looking in a suit all the time. It's really mm-hmm. picking up the broom because that day you know, my team then showed up. It's like thinking about what am I going to do to save this business when they said like, you know, no space could be operational. It just is so much. So I definitely want to share that. And I want to share that with all the people I want to bring on board, all the people that I'm talking to every day, you know, from my accounting, from, you know, amazing business that have been supporting me so they could see some other step in journey. So for me, I wasn't sure. I'm just, it wasn't something that I value to be in front of the camera. Mm, I love that. And I think that's just so honest and it's true. It's like sharing, like you said, looks different from everyone for everyone. And I think one of the things you mentioned earlier that, you know, you're able to pick up the phone and that's why I say like a powerful leader uh, behind the scenes she has been and like your time is your time when you want to step out. But um, the fact that you said like I was able to pick up the phone and do this, this and this, it's like that's that's powerful and that's enough. And I think that you still are making waves and you're still doing these things. And it's a different side for people to see, you know, not everyone is out there in front of the camera, but they are still doing powerful and amazing things absolutely and then also i would definitely advise you know to kind of like extend on that for me when you say picking up the phone is also something that a lot of entrepreneurs have to understand you know when you're dealing with um so many people yes there's the internet email social a lot of people but from my experience you really in order for you to really get to know someone you know you really have to meet them and talk to them to understand how they work their energy and nobody's going to give you a check over social media nobody's going to give you a check like oh you know those checks that i'm looking for besides making transactional deal that's different you know service but 
you know, you really get to shock people because a lot of the time people are lonely. People are dealing with so much. And a lot of the entrepreneurs really appreciate sometimes me picking up the phone and talking to them. A lot of them is like, mm-hmm. oh my God, no one never done that. So people have, and then, so it's kind of like a shocking <laughs> thing for them. You yeah. call me. Yes, I want to call you. I want to know what you're looking for. I want to talk to you to hear pretty much because you could tell a lot from having a conversation in person of a phone conversation with someone versus to the email or digital words, two different things. Yeah, I totally agree, especially in doing black to business. It's like I'm a phone call person, too. And Joanne is definitely a phone call person, too. It's like we call the things that we could text. (laughs) <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Bro. Because you know, again, when you, you know, you get to really tell because you know, even yeah. here I'm good, I'm fine, I'm good, and then to the phone call, well, I am good, money, but I have a. This is what I'm currently. It, it, it's it's a different, it's a different relationship. I love it, and and she did mention the types of checks and things that she's going after. You got to pick up the phone because I think it's again um, putting on the fact that it's a different industry and that matters the type of relations and the types of communication. So people pre- prefer different types of communication based on certain industries. So I'm Absolutely. glad that you mentioned that. Um. So uh, one of my, before we wrap up final questions is for NY beauty suites, um, any plans of opening additional locations and also the grand opening. Let's talk about that. Yay. So the ribbon cutting, which I'm super proud of, um, is scheduled for January 20th at six, six o'clock, um, at 81 will be at our location. The beautiful part about it is, I decided to do something different, you know, so mm-hmm. many, I'm meeting so many creatives, so many dope entrepreneurs that is mind boggling. So I was like, I'm going to do something different. So the ribbon cutting this year is going to be launching it with 20 small businesses, beautypreneur, creative, small business and wellnesspreneur that's going to launch with me. What that looked like, we have 20 rooms where each room is going to be going to be each one of these entrepreneurs are going to provide their own experience um, from each room where a client, our partners and our supporters, our investor will have a chance to meet the people from the community who have a chance to meet these small businesses that are doing so amazing work. So I wanted to do something different. That's what it will be. It will have talk, it will have book signing and you'll get a chance to meet a lot of these small businesses that are actually kicking butt. And what I mean by that, these like curation of that day will be 75, 20 entrepreneurs launching, featuring 20 entrepreneurs. And we'll have 75 of us in the room together networking. And these 75 people, these will be my top must known entrepreneurs in Brooklyn that will be there. Love it. And also Black Food Business will be there. So, you know, if you're in the Brooklyn area, be sure to check it out. And uh, where can people go to find out more information on the opening if they want to attend? You could go to our website, www.nybeautysuite.com. Our Instagram page um, will have details and featuring all these businesses that we're going to be, that's going to be in the space with us. But our website and Facebook and um, Instagram. Love it. And Joanne, what do you see uh, in the future plans for NY Beauty Suites um, for you and your brand? Um, The future, definitely a mall location, looking to open more location this year as well. And also um, having an app. Um, I'm envisioning NY Beauty Street to have an app where right now where a lot of people in the residential side um, could easily book all these self-care and beauty and wellness services directly from these girls and guys that's going to be in the space. So an app definitely that's something that I would like to scale it to have a digital platform where people could book directly from these girls. So for example, if you from Atlanta, you come into New York for the first time, you want to get these services done, you know exactly where to go and to support these small businesses and where to find them. Love it. And also um, for someone who is listening that it's in the area or they just want to connect with you in general, uh, one, if they're in the area, what are some ways that they would, if they were interested in working with you, what would that look like? 
So I have two particular um, market that I serve, right? So if somebody is in the real estate uh, who have space, you know, you're a real estate owner, independent developer, and you have space and you're not sure what to do with the space, you're not too sure how to connect and build with the community, then that's something that I could definitely do. So I help business owner with physical space in Brooklyn to fill out their building to, you know, share space, share community with impact and attention, of course. Um, so that's how they could connect. They could connect with me via my LinkedIn page. Um, and then I have the other consumer side, you know, for small businesses um, that actually need to sit down and talk about like how to get started. They could definitely reach out to me via my personal page is under Trendy Tripping at Trendy Tripping. You could reach out to me there. Or you could reach out to me to email at hi at nybeautysuite.com. Love it. And if someone was looking to get an experience or take part in some space at NY Beauty Suites, how would they go about doing that? They could just go to our website and fill out an inquiry and um, set up a tour and then we'll get back to you and let us know like what type of service you provide. And even if you are not ready, but it's good to kind of have an idea what the industry looks like. Or if you want to connect with these amazing entrepreneurs, we do host monthly networking event opportunities and um, they could reach out to us via our website or our Instagram page. Love it. Well, Joanne, this has been amazing and you've shared so much. And I think that, again, your story is very inspiring and it just lights some fire under people who are on the edge and not sure of what to do in their next step. So I thank you for sharing that. Um, and I'm sure that being that you've been in business for a while, people want to know what are some tools and resources that have helped you in your entrepreneurial journey? Sure. So one of the tools that I'm currently, you know, use right now, which I love, I love Basecamp. Um, you know, that's where I coordinate and communicate with all my team. Um, you know, I have all my doc, you know, it helped me creating process, good process, you know, base camp, um, air tables, you know, these are the tools that I use to help me creating process and, um, have everything in one place and Google doc. Um, so these are the top three tools that I'm currently use that I communicate and deal in Slack, um, right now with, I use with the girls, um, to create and build the community. These are the main four um, that I currently use. And I would highly yeah. recommend for those who are in the building stage, um, Basecamp is a great tool. Yes, yes, yes. And Joanne, I love to ask this question, but what does it mean for you to be, what does it mean to you to be Black in business? <laughs> oh my God. I mean, it's, it's everything. Um, it's, it's something that actually make you, it makes something that make me realize you have to kind of know who you are, you know, because once you're comfortable with your own skin, um, when you're comfortable with what you're doing, you have the confidence now and you have the skill set. I would definitely say that is, um, it's everything is empowering. It's something that, that's, I don't even know where to start with that. It's something that's very empowering and something that could help a lot of entrepreneurs to kind of know where they're from. And once you're comfortable with your own skin and knowing that you're black owned businesses, you come from a long way and you have a long way to go. And with all the support of amazing people, that's something that, you know, you have a community that could help you with that. And you actually, one of those people I could honestly say in an early stage that helped me with that. Mm -hmm. You know, you were unapologetically, you know, like, um, you know, very open about like black owned businesses, working with black owned, women owned. You was very early in the stage before anybody was talking about um, black owned, supporting black owned. You have been a leader. And I thank you for that, for guiding me. And I thank you for being open and un making me understand what does it feel and why, it why that work must be done. So you are actually somebody that I really appreciate in that oh thank you joanne we talk about this all the time and i appreciate all the time that you tell me this because um you know this is why i'm here and i appreciate that i was able to be a part of that for you so yes yeah you're very comfortable that's a question that i need to ask you too <laughs> you very comfortable before anyone else saw it before i was like monique why you know you you had made us you know made me very conscious and then you had made me aware of the why, you know, 
And then I understand it now because as a small black owned businesses, you know, it's important to get that support because that's how we build our legacy. That's how we bring generation wealth. That's how, you know, we actually could create our own, you know, our own community, make it stronger. But versus kind of like the same way you have any other race, any other group have their own community where they work and build together. We don't have that. Having that is extremely important. And I thank you for that. You're welcome. See, this is a lifestyle, people. This is a lifestyle. Black to business is a lifestyle. This is not for play. So yes, um, that's true. I, I love it. And Joanne, I know that you mentioned um, some of the ways that people can connect with you. If you don't mind just reiterating, how can people connect with you, know more about your doing, what you're doing? And then also, how can people support you? Um, so, well, thank you. People could connect with me. So if you, again, like, it's a thing. If you're a business owner, um, you want to connect with me, there is various ways. You could meet me. You could, schedule, you could schedule a one-on-one meeting with me to meet me in the space. Or if you have an idea that you want to go by, you could meet with me, you know, to the meetings or networking or be in the space or schedule a meeting. Um, again, if you are somebody who have real estates, you know, um, an independent developer, you want to connect with me also to emails and, and, you know, I'm very easy to find. <laughs> You're always going to find me in the space right now. I, I, a lot of the time I'm in the space like five days a week at really be or the um, Brooklyn location. Love it. Well, thank you so much for being on the show, Joanne. And I'm excited about everything that you are doing. I'm excited for the ribbon cutting that's coming in, coming up and just the impact that you're making in the community and just excited for you to continue to grow this year. So thank you again for being on the podcast. And I will say, guys, she is also a listener of the Black to Business podcast. So we love to have our favorite listeners on here. So, yes, thank you Joanne, for being here. Thank you so much, Moni. Thank you for having me. Thank you, everyone. I'm truly inspired. Joanne's story is a shining example that nothing can stop you when you want something bad enough. And you will figure it out and you will figure out how to make it happen. What also resonated with me is that you truly have to go all in when you're building out your business. This means taking the necessary time to figure things out and being okay with making mistakes because you know that you have to see the vision through. As Joanne mentioned, if you're listening to this episode in real time, the ribbon cutting for NYB Suites would take place on January 20th at 6 o'clock p.m. in downtown Brooklyn. I will include the RSVP information in the show notes if you are in the area and would like to attend the celebration. As I mentioned, Black to Business will also be there, so I hope to meet some of you. And thank you so much for listening and be sure to share this episode with someone you know who would find value in this conversation and with someone you know who is in the beauty business. Go to blacktobusiness.com forward slash 78 for full show notes and resources mentioned. Chat with you next week.